Hi everyone, my name is Mark de Jong and I'm a platform architect at ING. Today we're going to talk about something we call zero privileged architecture. Zero privileged architecture is a way to design secure systems based on two principles. One, any change to the system is the result of controlled process, for example desired state. And two, any component in the system runs immutable yet ephemeral, meaning that if the component no longer confirms to the desired state, it is scaled and redeployed. So how can we implement this? What you see here is an example of a zero privileged architecture around container hosting. What it shows are the capabilities needed to run an immutable container hosting platform. This includes, of course, a CICD pipeline, operational monitoring, security monitoring, and much more. These are some important aspects to this design. First of all, a controlled pipeline is the only entry point for changes, both for the platform itself and for the workloads running on top of it. The hosting platform itself is immutable, and so are the namespaces. Having the CICD pipeline as the only entry point helps in enforcing automated compliance and controls around change management. Capabilities like vulnerability scanning, automated testing, and software asset management must interface with the CICD pipeline and not with the runtime. This means all continuous scanning is done on the built and deploy time artifacts and never in the runtime. Only digest mapping between the different artifacts in CICD is done to correlate the findings with the runtime instances. The second aspect is that communication patterns around all types of monitoring are pushed out based. Technical state compliance monitoring and anomaly detections are part of the platform and also events are pushed out. They will be consumed by operational monitoring and SIEM and XDR. This in turn populates various dashboards and alerting engines to support and notify developers and engineers. The third aspect is that observability and testing must be mature, as logging into production containers to resolve incidents is no longer possible for anybody or any process. There's no terminal or SSH access. Being able to investigate, all has to come from your observability environment. To resolve any issues, we go back to the first principle, and this includes the response capability of the Security Operations Center. All changes to an environment have to be done via CI-CD pipeline. Observability and testing are not a catch-all, and it will always be an unknown situation in which you might need to break these principles. For that, you have a break the glass procedure to be able to hand out privileges. But to make sure you will always go back to zero privilege implementation, the final step of the break glass procedure is that your entire environment needs to be redeployed from scratch to make sure no privileges are left that were given during the break glass. Why would your organization need a zero privilege architecture? There's a few reasons. To significantly reduce the risk of a successful ransomware attack to stabilize the environment with a significant reduction of operational errors, and to significantly reduce the risk of bad press, fines, or personal consequences due to data leakage. This brings us to our closing lesson. Security is achieved not when there's nothing more to add, but when there's no credential left to take away. This is the true intended outcome of what we call zero privileged. Thank you for joining me for this quick overview.